everybody and welcome back to attempts at governance this is episode 83 and we have some very special guests with us today raul back in action welcome back to the show sir we also have michael from Sidetail ventures jose is back funky here limo and adam fresh out of the woods really nice to have you here sir always appreciate you here uh, we're going to start where we usually do with the state of the treasury looking pretty good this week up 299,898 dot from this time last week, which is worth $1.66 million at today's market value. That brings the Treasury to a grand total of 44,436,297 dot. That's the state of the Treasury, and I'll now throw it over to Funky for the state of the funk. Thanks so much, Jay. Uh, great day to be alive and joined with such an uh, esteemed crowd of guests here on AAG. But uh, today I have a very important and serious message. There is no place for being duplicitous or deceitful in our ecosystem. If you are going to be an ecosystem agent, you need to be 100% honest at all times and fair in your dealings with other others, I should say. There's I don't need to name names. There's plenty of this going around. It needs to stop today. We have to work together if we're going to see Polkadot succeed. We are all ecosystem agents. We all have to be honest with each other. Thanks so much, Jay. Thank you very much. And I think part of being honest is if you create a parody account, make sure you have the word parody clearly in the title. We're now going to throw it over to Limo for referenda gone by. Thank you very much, Jay. And before I get before I get told that I am the parody account, I'm not the parody account. Everybody seems to think that I am everything in this ecosystem for some reason. So uh, to begin with the referenda, we've got referendum 209 by Dot Insights on the medium spender track it was approved with 69% AI, and that was for 43,000 Dot for Dot Insights, a research hub and data platform for the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystem. So congrats to the sub wallet team. Then when we spoke out last week, ref 215 by Small Dot on the medium spender track was approved with 97% AI, and that's for 19,000 DOT for small DOT development financing for Q4 2023. Then Easy Air are back with referendum 216 on the medium spender track, approved with 89% AI, and that's for 55,000 DOT for milestone three of the Polkadot, Easy Air hackathons at Harvard and in London. Then we've got friend of the show, Mr. Blockchain Brad, referendum 219 on the medium spender track, was approved with 94% I, and that's for 14,000 dot for blockchain Brad, educational and journalist content for six months. Then we've got referendum 221 by PokerTube on the small spender track, was approved with 65% I, and that's for 5,000 dot for PokerTube, empowering the Spanish speaking Polkadot ecosystem with Rust programming, Substrate, and marketing content. And I know there's a lot of Spanish content stuff that we'll probably speak about today as well. Then we've got Ref222 by Macadot, 
uh, on the small spend the track was approved with 82 percent i and that's for 3500 dot for a marketplace and marketing with profits going to the polka dot and kusama community quite an interesting one then we've got polka dot now india with referendum 223 on the medium spend the track was approved with 91% I, and that's the 25,000 dot for Polkadot Pulse 1.0 and Polkadot Networking Night at IBW ETH India Week. And then we've got, I hope I don't butcher this name, Meng Long on the small spinner track with referendum 225, was approved with 71% I, and that's for 1,500 dot for retroactive funding for 73 videos about the Polkadot ecosystem, I believe in Chinese. Then we've got Afterside Crypto on the small spend the track, referendum 226, was approved with 65% I, and that's again for 1,500 dot for Afterside Crypto in Italian, uh, and this is Polkadot Ecosystem video content in Italian, and that's for two videos. Then we've got Six, who was on the show previously, uh, on the small spend the track, referendum 230 was approved with 92% I, and that's for 7,000 dot, for the Polkadot Sanctuary, a journey of achievements and innovations in Bali. And the only one that didn't get approved this week is by Mr. Joe Petrowski on the whitelist caller track. Referendum 241 was cancelled, and that was a runtime upgrade, and it was cancelled by Bill Laboon, who just loved cancelling and killing referendums left and right. Referendum 246 was approved with 100% I, and that was to kill poor Joe Petrowski's referendum, and that was referendum gone by. Damn, thank you very, very much, Limo, and uh, welcome, Batman, up to the show. Hey, Jake. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here. So we're changing up the format a little bit today. We actually have no presentations, but uh, we are going to go through the 18 referenda and discussion uh, currently up that are not marketing, and then we're going to throw the uh, content and media conversation to the very end of the show. Uh, because there's lots to talk about there. Mr. Lima. You mean all of the vast army of content creators who have referendums and didn't want to come and present? Oh, that's a, that's a red flag, mate. Just, just to clarify, we will give them room to present, but we're going to put it all to the end of the show. Uh, just uh, so uh, <laughs> if people want to stick around and discuss that, they can. Uh, Lima, of course, you're joking. Look, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm up here trying to run a show, sweating buckets. All right, I don't need to be trolled from the panel. No, all right, we're all good. So we're going to start with uh, Treasury proposal, an expansive course on Substrate and Polkadot. This is just a discussion right now, but this is from folks at Quit Quinance. Quinance. Uh, Quinance. And they're looking for, let's take a, a double check here, a quick look into their uh, document. Looking for $60,000 worth of DOT to create a course on Polkadot SDK uh, and Cumulus uh, and Polkadot itself. Yes, go ahead, Limo. Does anybody know, is there like a list of all these courses and educational platforms that have been funded before? Like, it's really hard to keep track of them, right? And I'm, I'm sure we've funded a lot of these before. Um, it might be good to like, aggregate them all in one place to know exactly what we already have, right? Yeah, that's true. We have the Patika guys, and they're coming back with another ref soon uh, with smaller milestones. And w what else do we have? It escapes um, me, but we've definitely had a few, I think. Yeah, well. Yeah, there are, there are two very interesting courses that were funded also by Treasury, but I think it was, I'm not sure if it was Kosama or Polkadot Treasury, uh, led by... Um, by two Argentinian ambassadors. They did a Rust course and a Substrate course, uh, both well attended. I think the reports are up and published, but if not, I can get them for you in the next days. Uh, the reports are there. I just, I need to find them. I need to find the, the, the proposals. Okay, that'd be great. I mean, it'd be fantastic to track these like big categories uh, like we're gonna do at the end of the show here for the media spend. Um, the other one coming up is Polkadot Blockchain Academy. They want to make a course as well, or they want to basically put their course uh, digital, which would be pretty sick. Hey, Ben, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Um, and uh, just looking at the comments here, if uh, Crypto's Chain wants to come up, he's uh, more than welcome, or anybody else, the panel link is at the very top of the description there. So we have uh, 
This one, which uh, I'm still pretty on the fence about, Enhance Analytics Solutions for Polkadot Chain Specs Treasury Proposal. This is to um, uh, analyze the uh, Polkadot blockchain data and I believe create dashboards and some content out of it. This is over halfway through the decision period. Right now, 14.72 uh, million against and uh, 400,000 for. Uh, anybody on the panel have thoughts about this one? We're all pretty meh about it. I think chain spec did come from the, yes, previously applied for, ooh, previously applied for a Web3 Foundation grant. I wonder if that means they got it. Hmm. All right, that's chain spec. Milestone four for the Polkadot's Hackathon Global Series, a Asian Pacific edition, I think that means. This is by Tribe and Angel Hack. Um, I I think this will be the final milestone. Uh, what do you guys know about that? I believe that's the case. We've had these guys on the show like three or four times, it feels like. Yes. Um, yeah, they seem to be doing a good job um, and deliver on what they say they're going to do. So hopefully this one passes as well. Good stuff uh, right now with uh, 33.85 million in favor. And uh, we've only seen one in recent history not pass with that sort of weight behind it. So that should probably go through. Events Bounty V2 Curator Candidacy. Um, about a third way through this decision period. What do we have uh, What do we have here? How's this going? Seems to be well received by the community so far. Yeah, well, we spoke about it last week, right? Um, the goal is just to improve the bounty, go through like a lot of the backlog and just make it more efficient overall. Um, we was hoping we'd have a presentation this week, but it's looking like next week, Jay, which is a lot of the way through the referendum, obviously. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any concerns or anything, um, just drop on Poker Assembly and we'll gladly answer them. Yeah, um, I was looking forward to the presentation. Can you give us like a quick overview of the new, uh, just can you give us a quick overview of the new structure? Not presentation, just like uh, loosely? Yeah, sure. So previously there was uh, three curators, I believe. It was Zoe, Mark Ryan, and... Elodie, I believe. Um, <laughs> thank you, Funky. Um, now the curator sets expanded, so it includes uh, Hutch as a curator. It includes the uh, Web Zero team as a group curator, um, and they obviously have quite a lot of expertise in in events organizing. They host a lot of events that decoded in Sub Zero and a lot of different other events as well. Um, and Chaos Style as a curator as well. Um, so hopefully when there's more eyes to review the proposals that come in, which is apparently is like one every two days, um, hopefully it can be a lot more efficient there. And yeah, there's massive backlog, just trying to get through all that and improve the like reporting. Um, cause that was one issue from the community that felt like they didn't really know what was going on inside the bounty. Um, and maybe getting like arrow eye metrics and all that kind of stuff. Um, which is what we're currently working on now discussing what those metrics should be. Um, yeah and adding more like sub curators and stuff to help out um with like specialized local knowledge and all that kind of stuff yeah do you do you see a future where this event's bounty becomes more of a collective is that a in the sites or what do you think oh, I, I mean i personally don't mind um yeah i mean we can try it out um just depends on if big voters like collectives or bounties or not right yeah, uh, how much fun? How how much stock do you guys still have left in this bounty? I think there's around four hundred thousand dot, I believe, but you would have to check. I think it's that number. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Anybody else have a? Qu yeah, go ahead, Ralph. Yeah, I mean, you guys know that I'm a big fan of bounties, right? I I, <laughs> I love the mechanism. I think it's it's so interesting, and I think the social dynamics of the bounty mechanism is also so interesting. I wanna um, repeat two things that I've already said before um, a while ago. But the first one is we need to make sure that bounty curators are responsive to the community. Uh, this means. If you define a waiting period by which a team needs to wait to fund their event or for you guys to answer uh, to an application, that waiting period should be um, respected, right? Because there are times and there's uh, compromises and commitments that this team has 
when it comes to organize an event, it's not an easy task. The second thing is, okay, so before that, related to um, to the demand and the, the time spent uh, on analyzing uh, events and answering to the public, I think it's really, really, really important that uh, an increase of curators and sub curators happened on the event bounty. This is something that I've been talking about with the events team, with the events bounty team for a very long time, uh, and due to different circumstances, they couldn't do it before. Um, I think it's really important that there is an increase in curators and that they divide the tasks in order to be able to be responsive to everyone. And the second very important element of a bounty is reporting. Um, I cannot stress enough how important it is for curators to report back to the community on what they spend, how they spend it, and what is the justification for it. That is so, so important. Um, if you have an objective, um, if you have objective requirements on an application for a bounty, is it events or whatever that is, it's important that curators respect that and then argument their decisions based on those objective uh, metrics or those objective requirements, right? Um, I would think that reporting back to the community on a bounty, like events bounty, which is so demanding, should happen at least once a week, hmm. for example, or every two weeks. It's so important to maintain the relationship between the community and the curator because the curator gets the power to administer the bounty from the community and the community can take them off. The community can uh, decide by, by a proposal to take this curator team away and put another one or to close the bounty altogether, how we've seen before, right? That's everything I wanted to say about bounties mechanism and events bounty. That is so awesome. And uh, this would be a great place to share that report weekly, by the way. Zylo, welcome back to the show. You're right. The whole gang is back together. What do you got to say? I am. Yeah, so I'm going to address a few points in regards to the events bounty. Uh, so I'm part of Web Zero the entity on the multi -seek. Before I start, uh, Raul, amazing sweater. Okay, now I can share my points. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, somebody asked how many funds are left still in the bounty. It's uh, $1.8 million uh, currently as it stands. Um, in regards to forming a collective, t that obviously depends on how this tech is going to be developed and presented and whether somebody thinks that the events bounty is a entity that develops the ecosystem as a whole because for what from what i understand collectives will mainly be those groups of people that uh develop polka as itself and there will be transparent paychecks directly from the treasury and so on so i don't know if bounties per se fit into this narrative um so i suppose it's something to be decided on in regards to reporting before the uh, proposal went on chain, I have personally uh, discussed with the previous slash current curators that uh, it is absolutely imperative to have all of the quarterly reports published, and they are currently published. Additionally to that, we have outlined a few categories that we want to fund uh, with the rest of the with the re remaining finances in the bounty. Um, we will share this publicly soon because we still need to speak to the sub curators about it. But the four main categories would be cross chain events, specifically events such as uh, Web2 uh, conferences, such as such as VR developers um, in Berlin, which is a very, very big um, conference. And then it's hackathons. Uh, obviously, meetups are still going to be a thing. And uh, business development. Um, events as well. Um, the target audiences would be, uh, as far as I know, at least um, developers and uh, entrepreneurs, um, because uh, at least my personal uh, hypothesis is that we need more users. And in order to have more users, we need more user facing applications. And in order to have more user facing applications, we need more builders and we need more entrepreneurs to work together on all of these um, things. Uh, in regards to any kind of uh, reporting, we will revise uh, all of the proposals that have been submitted to the bounty itself. There was some kind of issue with the type form and therefore not every uh, proposal had a report attached to it. However, we will, we will reach out to every single team that has not submitted a report and we will make it clear that if they do not submit a report in XYZ amount of time, they will not be able to apply again for an event. 
we will also be uh, introducing a mechanism called strikes in case somebody doesn't submit a report in the next two months after the event has been completed. Again, they won't be able to apply for another event. Awesome, sounds like all good stuff. Um, Funky, that's two and a half minutes left of this 10 minute section, is that right? Yeah, and that's what I was gonna, I, I, did, I couldn't, you know, if it were, if it had cut off like Senpai or Xylo, I don't think I could have like just yelled time like I wanted to at the beginning of the show, but uh, <laughs> everybody else, you've been warned, when this hits, I'm gonna yell time in the mic. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, if it, uh, nobody else has anything to say about this, I want to say welcome up Tom and Luis. Welcome back to the panel. And rolling on here with the big event that's up in play right now is uh, refunding the CoinDesk Consensus 2023 event in Austin. Um, now, this one is going really well. We have the 16D behind it with 30 million. Um, probably this won't pass right now at 96% in favor. I think we could expect one. Did this one go through the events bounty at all or not at all? No, no, this is separate because it's probably too big, right? Yeah, I believe it's because uh, the amount of money is uh, too high, so it needs to be a separate referendum. Okay, great. We have um, the non custodial dot payments integration for major e commerce platforms. Now, this one is. Uh, is tricky. It's an idea that I really like. It's a team that I, I, I really, really like. Obviously, they produce a lot of great stuff for the ecosystem, including, oh, look at this, the Campilla wallet, okay, right there. But um, 16D is on the nay side of this one, uh, making it uh, probably very difficult to get this one through. Uh, I think the team is upping the cost of their dev kit version of the Campilla, so I think you have a few days to buy it at its current price. It's definitely uh, really fun. Um, you can check that out at K-A-M-P-E dot L-A or something like that. Anyway, you can find them on, uh, on Twitter there. But uh, let's see what else we have. Something that did go through, though, kind of interesting, uh, was this. Oh, sorry, Limo, you talked about Market Dot. Here we have a uh, discussion for DSSG. And this is kind of, this is not really a proposal yet, but somebody who wants to create uh, a DAO, wants to get people together and focus on um, staking in the ecosystem. Yeah. Um, okay, and here's a really interesting one by Nick from Motive Network. So he was just in a couple weeks ago getting that staking dashboard through, which was a little bit controversial. Uh, back and forth, but here he is wanting to create a bounty for developers looking to enter the ecosystem. So as we know, OpenGov is extremely hardcore, takes several years off your life, um, super, super stressful, difficult to build and produce in these circumstances. So it looks like uh, Nick and Motive Network want, here want to create this sort of um, fund to jumpstart uh, developers who are just entering the ecosystem. What, what does the panel think about an idea like that? Are the developers building something that's useful for the ecosystem or are there any categories on the bounty proposal? What is it covering? Good questions. Adam, sorry, I got you. Like you raised your hand when you catch up. So sorry. No worries. Um I just want to make a comment as someone who has onboarded traditional Web2 developers into dApps and Web3 paradigms, there is a learning curve, um, usually about two to three months, depending on the developer. I know my front end guy, it took him like literally just a month to understand the whole wallet connect paradigm. Um, so there, I mean, I think it's a good thing to bring traditional web two developers into the web three space to develop things. But you have to also understand that there's going to be some loss of efficiency because you have to onboard them into these new paradigms that they don't, they're not used to. And so it's just something to keep in mind. Um, and also something to consider when you're considering which developers to fund, do they have that ability to pivot to a new paradigm of development? Nice. Um, I think it was funky. And then uh, Ben, 
And uh, Raul, I posted a link to this discussion. Um, we're going to go over the FAQ after, which I think answers a bunch of your questions there. But uh, go ahead, Funk. It was Ben. Ben, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Ben. No, it's just, uh, is this not what the Web3 Foundation grants and things are for? Um, and the other programs that we've got in the ecosystem for bootstrapping people who are looking to get started, want to get their teeth sunk into things. Uh, and then OpenGov is for the, the next stage or just if you don't want to go that route. I don't, I'm not sure I would add another additional layer. Hmm. Interesting point. Yes, Funk? And my comment was just... Uh... Let's give the Avalon guys some time. I mean, this is the whole purpose, right? That they are building a, a, a set of tools to allow Web2 developers to just come in and not have to even worry about doing a lot of the Web3 stuff because it's all abstracted behind the scenes. So I don't know if we're duplicating efforts here. I mean, I'm not to say, you know, anything that's going to bring additional builders to the ecosystem is great, right? But I, I just feel like we already have a couple of solutions in place. To Ben's point, you know, the Avalon stuff. I don't know if this may be just too early. Uh, okay, uh, we, we have some uh, FAQs here, uh, which address some of Raul's opening questions, I think. So one is um, primary, they say here, the primary goal of Easy Build is to attract new teams that are capable of creating ready to use products in the ecosystem. So I guess this would be end user products. And it also requires entrants to have a functioning uh, MVP in order to, to enter. So it's not like coming just with an idea and, and can you let me build it? Um, there are also uh, requirements for each stage of a five-step, I believe it's a five-step program. Here it is, four-stage program. Um, uh, milestones of development to keep them scuttling along the path here. Um, yeah, well, what do you think, Raul, now that you've had a chance to check it out? I would have to read uh, a complete Hold on, let me find it because I want to see something. Is this an incubator? Okay, it says, well, a classic incubator targets teams without a form idea. Okay, MVP, yeah. Uh, it's not a launch, but it focuses on supporting the development of projects and integration to the ecosystem and dodge utilization. But it says ready to use products, but what type? Like, is there, a, is there some sort of like ecosystem research before this bounty that they say, okay, so, this is the things that the ecosystem needs. This is where we're going to focus on. This is where we're going to focus our efforts and the resources. Anyone who wants to create something related in these categories, then come and apply, right? Nice. That, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm missing, I think. Nice, absolutely. Uh, Limo, what were you saying there in the chat? Missed it. I was just copying something from the proposal. Uh, it says like things like asset hub decks, uh, open gov, um, NFTs, palette, EVM solutions, XCM, core player, core jam. So I'm wondering if those are the things that the team should be focusing on that are going to potentially get funded yeah, by but this. Yeah, that's everything. Is yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you know, um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All I'd say about this is. Sometimes, like there's bounties, but also sometimes there's just like services. And I'm not sure this would apply here, but you know, like the Motive team and, and Nick, they have their own unique connections and their own unique take on the ecosystem. They know people in certain parts of the world. Um, it, you know, maybe they would be great at bringing on great development teams. Does this need to be a bounty with a treasury? Um, maybe that would be a good way to go about it. But there's also the option of advocating for teams as well, right? Like a team doesn't have to be super knowledgeable about OpenGov to go through. They can be guided through, uh, even through milestone creation and all that. So it just, just that's an, another option as well. But I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more from the Motive team. And uh, thanks to the panel for the discussion so far. Um, okay, another somewhat uh, conversational discussion post here by Tycho Massius. Uh, who I really enjoy on Twitter. He's um, just generally looking to um, get a culture, get a, get a DAO going, get a, a culture of Polkadot uh, jump started. I think he's looking for um, people to uh, join in, uh, jump on his spirit, and uh, create something together. So, uh, yeah, I'll just throw that in the chat if you guys want to check it out. But uh, not really a strong... Uh, idea or product there, more of a vision, a general vision. Um, 
Yes, Liam. Uh, a really quick one, um, like the second to last paragraph. Uh, it says, to have enough staking rewards, we would ideally have a loan of 100,000 dot. Um, oh, as wait. far as I... In the reviving the spirit of the bird thing? Yeah, the second ah. to last paragraph. Hmm. So as far as I understand it, uh, there's an issue with the treasury giving out dot to be staked. Um, because in the event they get slashed, it goes back to the treasury. So it kind of plays with the security of the network a little bit. Um, I think, uh, Ryan, didn't you have a similar issue with Teddy Dow back in the day, right? Yeah, when we, we had wanted to, we, our grand vision was as part of the Polkadot community, like if we had that where it was consistently then that, that was like the donation sort of, but then immediately became clear that A, the community didn't want to do the loan. Then Gav came out and said the thing about the security of the network with the stake dot. And so immediately we just yanked that from the proposal and just asked for the amount straight. Yeah. And, I, and ever since then, I've told other people looking for loans, like, I don't think it's going to happen, especially if you're using it for staking and then trying to feed off that. Yeah, it took me a second to wrap my head around it, but it did eventually make sense. I mean, if if you get DOT in your possession and you stake that, I think that's all right because you have something to lose, right? But if the Treasury is staking DOT, it has nothing to lose, so it's not really, there's no value in the proof of stake there. It just goes back to the Treasury. Um, okay, did catch that. Thanks for pointing that out, Limo. Um, we have a, a data project here. We're going to actually hear from them in two weeks. Uh, this is Sarab and um, also a couple members from the Parity Data team. Uh, they have um, a project uh, they're putting together here. We'll hear from them in a couple weeks, but it is already live. Let's see, 1.5 against a million four, and they're looking for quite a big sum, 99,025 dot on the medium spender track. So we'll hear from them in a couple weeks. PokeSafe is back and supported by 16D. So these are the folks that bring us PokeAssembly, their multi-sig uh, application. Uh, they're looking for retroactive funding. They were in before, but um, that was when we had like Multics going and we had Nova going and we had all these multi-sig projects all at the same time. And PokeSafe was one that actually uh, didn't make it through. So they have a reduced budget here um, and doing quite a lot better. This one for... 33,120 dot. Uh, real quick, does, does anybody use uh, PokeSafe here? Or ha has used yet? No. No. Yeah, Liam? I haven't used that. I mainly use uh, Nova Spectre and Multi-X. Um, but in general, I think competition's good, right? Uh, if there's multiple, multiple products, then teams will try to compete against each other. Whereas if there's just one Monopoly, then innovation can get kind of stifled um so i, I personally kind of support this one um even though chaos star voted me on it don't don't shoot me about that <laughs> all right yeah okay um yeah thanks that looks like that's going to go through no problem we have the uh capex parachain that uh vc style uh, proposal um doesn't look like it's going to make it here 45 million against about a quarter million for um Hopefully that team can come up with some other uh, solution here, but this one looks a little bit dead in the water, and yeah, that's actually going to close in four hours. So um, all the best to the CapEx team from here. How are you guys feeling about this bounty proposal, business prospects for Polkadot in Brazil? It's uh, interesting. We haven't had 16D on this one yet. Um, obviously, this is one of the initiatives that is supported by Ivy. So Ivy is on the I side here. Um, usually they're Navy, now they're Ivy, but, um, what do you guys think about this one, uh, based on what you've been hearing since we first spoke about it? Yeah, Luis. Oh yeah, Luis, you're on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. What do you got for us, buddy? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I already said a lot of stuff in the past, uh, AAG, so I'm more here, like, to complement some of that stuff, uh, from the... Uh, the last AEG, uh, one of the things that we improve is the Mutsig uh, wallet, the wallet that will be holding the the funds of the bounty, you know, the responsible to distribute the, the funds. It will be a pre-proxy. That's something we talked with Filimo and also Zoe to implement that since it will be possible, you know, to change the, the curators as we go. If the curators, you know, they get offline or something happen with them, 
uh, it will be a possibility to change the creators thanks to, to the pure proxy. And also uh, they will be able to add new creators too. Uh, if someone shows that they can be valuable to, you know, uh, read the reports and, and, you know, implement something that we didn't uh, have thought before. So yeah, it's it's it can be something something good for us and for better you know transparency for the ecosystem. So and yeah, one more thing like this is <clears throat> that I would like to add. It's that uh, since parity parity and representation is you know taking this distance from the, the the main actors from the ecosystem, I know that a lot of projects like this will started to show up and it's really important to ask questions like to know the team who they are what's their their, their background their experience uh, if they know the ecosystem this is something that i think it's very very valuable right now because you know there's a lot of of walls built around polka dot for the the overall you know ecosystem that if we don't show them like the, those those process if you don't show them that it's possible to use something like Epilon, something like, you know, Qt, something like Moving for smart contracts, something like Aster, you know, like all of the, the infrastructure you have right now. Uh, like, for example, if something you want, if some project wants to do something with modular NFTs, so there's Remark, there is also Fala Network with uh, the NFTs, there's something new, you know, we have to know this, we have to, to have this, this knowledge to make it easier for this, the onboarding of those projects, you know? And that's really important, <clears throat> especially because it's contributes to the, it contributes to the success of those business. Because if we choose the wrong set of toolings and infrastructure, infrastructure, it can be very, very bad for us. So yeah, this is something that I would like to highlight, the importance of choosing the right infra infrastructure Something like, for example, Tensi, if the project is small, you know, they, they won't be able to start building their own chain using the default setup of the, you know, the how many projects started. So they would be uh, willing to use something easier. You know, it's more highlighting this stuff, uh, like what Alice and Bob also says, you know, we have to, to show that the developer experience is easier right now compared to two years ago. And this is contributes a lot to the success of a lot of business. Okay, good stuff. What are, uh, any thoughts about that or any questions? That's an interesting. It's an interesting um, initiative here. Obviously, very much looking forward to the reports that Raul was talking about at the beginning of the show and seeing how this this goes and um definitely a lot of pitfalls for new projects entering the ecosystem you could really stumble up upon the wrong approach to, to building on polka dot still so it'd be good to have people there to help out but uh, we definitely want to see um the results yeah go ahead limo yeah one question um that i saw somebody bring up in polka assembly or something um i see that the curators have a 10 percent uh, allocation um, I think it might be good for you to just quickly outline what the roles and responsibilities of the curators are in this bounty, if there's any additional work they're doing uh, and why it's 10% allocation to them. Yeah, so since it's, I'm short on time, so I'll be quicker here. Uh, the curators will also be responsible to not just hold the funds and distribute the funds, they will be responsible also to help us and in guidance, like that's, how, that's why we have some business developers there. Uh, there's a lot of groups of people that know about the ecosystem there. So they will read the reports that will help us uh, behind the, the scenes. Just, I just have a, one minute. That's it. I can't, I can't, answer, I can't answer the questions if the, the time is out. No, that's just the first five, right? Right, Funk? Yeah, keep going. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> new new format, new format. All right. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, so yeah, I mean, the, the creators like uh, Nick is already helping us in the, in the background to create something like a deal desk to help those business. Um, Ivy is also, for example, they will jump in some meetings to help us develop some strategies for, the, for some business. And yeah, they won't be just sitting idle 
reading reports and and uh, sending the funds. They will be a really, very, very crucial part of the the bounty. Nice stuff. That answers your question, Limo. Oh, and also the the network. You know, they have a lot of network of you know mm -hmm. a lot of people that are good to use. Yeah, I don't think an incentive for bounty curators to do all this work, especially the reporting and everything, is, is so bad, as long as uh, it makes sense and is well-defined. Um, okay, Luis, thank you for coming on the show. Let's keep uh, rolling here because we're just getting close to the big topic of the day. We have some work on rewarding system parachain collators. So first we have Coin Studio here looking to uh, give tips to collators for Q4 of 2023. Uh, looks like 203 dot per month over three months. So each of the system collators is getting uh, up to 609.73 dot. But then we have a proposal by Mile, and I'm hoping for some context from members of the panel here, to um, uh, oh, is this is this a bounty? This is a bounty. Okay, so we're gonna go from just like tips every three months or whatever to a full uh, bounty to support system collators like I think we did have or still have on Kusama. Yeah. And then we have this other one. He oh, no, that's it for uh, for collators there. So go ahead, Limo. Yeah, I think a bounty for the systems parachain collators makes sense. Um, stops people having to put in proposals all the time it's for a very specific thing. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. Same as like an RPC bounty makes a lot of sense. Mm. Um, and hopefully they don't get rejected this time. They did try to go on Polkadot before and they were rejected? I think an RPC one was, oh, yeah. yes. Right. Yes, Adam. Yeah, you know, I uh, ran a call later on Bridge Hub and I just wanted to provide some, some more context. Um, this bounty has always been planned for both Polkadot and Kusama. And it's temporary because the main reason you need to compensate collators is because there's no on-chain fees that they're collecting because there's nobody using Bridge Hub. There's nobody using Asset Hub yet. But once these uh, D apps get launched and these uh, the bridge is opened and people are swapping and we're entering a bull run, collators are going to get compensated off of transaction fees. And also, uh, it won't be a, a strict, like a, a constant bond. There'll be kind of like a competitive bond where collators will compete. The highest bond gets the slot, gets a solid collator spot. So um, I know that's in the works as well. So it, this is going to develop into a more competitive business model for um, people who run infrastructure. So I, I think that the bounty is appropriate now, but in the future, it may not be. Is there um, any reason why uh, this reward needs human intervention? Is there any possible way to set this these rewards on chain somehow? Or, or what do we think about that? I think it is human, human intervention in the sense that government needs to vote and approve if we want to use a treasury with good schedule payments uh, using scheduler, right? Mm -hmm. We could schedule payment for collators. I do want to add to what Adam said, which I completely agree as well, is that a reminder for everyone, I don't know if everyone knows what system chains are, everyone like in the audience, but just system chains are considered common good on Polkadot. So these are chains that don't, um, don't auction for a slot. Uh, they provide features that the relay chain in its minimalistic architecture does not really provide. And so you have the asset hub, the collectives and some others. And uh, if I remember correctly, uh, a few months ago, or yeah, more beginning of the year, we ended up decentralizing the collator management, right? So now collators are also participants from the ecosystem and, and whatnot. Okay, uh, Limo, if uh, you schedule payments, can you just say that Limo, it's cut off for me. Yeah, if we schedule payments, um, like now, for example, if the payments got scheduled and the collator drops out of the set, would they still get paid or can it like dynamically adjust to who's in the active set? Mm, governance could cancel the schedule, but it could need human intervention. So it's not yeah, very dynamic, yeah. right? Yeah, so the bounty just seems to make more sense maybe. 
Uh, yeah, Adams. Yeah, just real quick. Um, you know, the, the one that I led on Kusama a few months ago, I did that by calculating block production. And so I, I'm not really in favor of a, a static payment mm -hmm. just for being a call leader at, over a period of time. I do believe in performance based payments. And so a scheduler could make sense, um, but it'd be pretty cumbersome to change any uh, payments because you'd have to go through the root track or whitelisted caller. And that's um, very cumbersome. Okay, so looks like uh, this is uh, what we have to do for now. Um, thanks very much for the uh, info, guys. We have uh, one more here. This is uh, Supercomputing Systems, who, if you remember, we saw on the show, what was this, maybe August or September, they were looking for funding. I think they were holding off until OpenGov was on, and then they almost didn't make um, the proposal at that time. Uh, this is that ref so this is from september to december and it was a bit of a struggle here we were hanging around 30 percent for a while um before um we got them back up to where they finished 88 percent almost now they're looking for thirty thousand dollars for six months of uh, 2024 january to june this is for the substrate api client you guys think is this do we still need to fund this i don't know we don't know. Okay, so, okay. We'll let we'll let that battle out in the uh, in the in the vote there, and um, then finally bring uh, finishing off here before the big discussion. This is on the root track two three one. This is Polkadot Treasury USDT acquisition. Um, this is uh, currently sitting at sixty one point nine percent. I'm I'm curious. What do the people on the panel think? Some holders uh, have against this proposal. Well, what's the problem here? Uh, I've seen one comment that's like, uh, why isn't this on other DEXs and not hydro DX, for example? Um, who's voting there? Is the one big account voting there, potentially? Uh, we have 12H2 uh, with 1.2 mil, 12.6P uh, with half a mil, and then um, Lovefish is up there with half a mil as well. Let's see if uh, these guys have voted in the past here. Let's take a little journey here. Yeah. Okay. So seven votes in the past from the biggest voter. They've only ever voted I for small dot financing. And because uh, the whole kind of point of using Hydra is y you don't need uh, like human intervention to place the bids. You can like automate the DCA mm -hmm. over time, so it, like reduces the risk of buying a peak and then it like goes down or whatever, right? Um, which I'm Assuming is why Hydra was chosen. I don't believe any other decks in the ecosystem has that. Um, I mean, I can't quite say I'm a grain of salt because I'm a Hydra counselor, but I don't see any issue with this implementation. Uh, like, I think it's the best solution with the tools that we have without having a group of people have to place orders all the time and right. use their judgment, right? It, right. I think this is set up so the treasury funding is going to go straight cross chain to Hydra DX and then start DCAing and then head right back into the uh, yeah. treasury, uh, the um, fellowship treasury, right? Go ahead, uh, Adam. Yes. Yeah, I, I saw a comment on there that said it's too much money. Um, and then also, at least my concern mm -hmm. is with the fellowship, um, obviously with it being in its infancy, um, it's kind of cherry picked. Uh, and it's pretty much mm. like parody 2.0. And oh, if you look at the fellowship, at least last time I checked, it's been a while, but there are almost like almost no one has their identities on, on the wallets. And so there's the question of accountability. Is, is every fellowship member earning their salary? How can we verify that? Where are their GitHub commits and their GitHub comments? And how can we verify it's that person is mapped to a certain wallet? So those are just my concerns and maybe they're addressed and maybe there's like a directory somewhere of verified addresses, but um, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to pull up that, uh, that list now, but this is something I'm, I'm excited about this pay here is this is gonna be a forcing function from holders on the fellowship to get things done, right? Now there's like, okay, well, like you're, be you're being paid and I guess that makes you an employee of holders, so I'm kind of interested to see how that dynamic shapes up. Um, yeah. Who else? The, Go ahead, Ben. 
the actual um, salaries will still have to go through governance as well to really? actually set it up in the first place. I, saw, I think I saw that somewhere. Because you can see there's a couple of questions on there which are still unanswered, mm -hmm. um, just in terms of like the salary structures, etc. But those need to come further down the line, like the fellowship mm -hmm. haven't agreed those yet. So at the moment, this is essentially just uh, authorizing a sale of, what is it, 469,000 dot for USDT, which will then be sitting in the fellowship account. But um, that obviously isn't all up and running yet. So right. that'll come later down the line. Um, sort of a separate matter that we can all discuss at that point. That's interesting. So just throwing up the fellowship member list here, uh, looks like a lot of the top rank members do have identities, but as we scroll down, it gets a little bit patchy there, maybe 50-50 or so. Um, yeah, so this kind of brings us to the bigger uh, question of, um, of collectives. And I, I think what you just described, Ben, is interesting because Collectives do have this like relationship with the rest of OpenGov in order to fund the treasury, set parameters, and all these things like that. Uh, Raul, this morning you popped up back on the forums. Very good to see you on here with a big piece. It's time to start thinking about marketing on Polkadot. Let's kick off the discussion. You uh, posted this uh, about eight hours ago, and um, wondering if you could give us a little rundown of what motivated you to do this and uh, what people can expect to find when they dive in. Sure. So... I mean, yeah, I'm a bit rusty, so um, the article is not so long, um, but it's some things that I've been thinking about since uh, all of the events we've seen in the last week on on governance regarding marketing proposals and the fact that uh, Parity is decentralizing part of its team, but we still need marketing and content creation on the Polkadot network as well. So basically the article outlines these concerns it outlines the fact that it is very hard. I'm not a marketing person. I'm not a communications expert. So if someone is, then you can, you can definitely ref refute me. But for what I've seen um, in this year, some Polkadot and in other blockchains as well, it is very important for marketing strategy and efforts to have, I wouldn't say a unique voice, but some sort of leadership when it comes to guidelines on branding, on content creation, a source of truth, and so on, right? And so the article basically outlines the three mechanisms that are available in the treasury to, um, to understand what these mechanisms are, what the pros and cons are, and how a topic like marketing could be covered by the treasury if yes or no. So what I ask the token holders in the communities, like, think for yourself, do you want marketing and content creation funded by the treasury? And if you do, then what do you think is the best way to organize this, right? Um, we've had really good examples of content creation. I think the Kusumerian is a good example of a project that has started um, very early on and has kind of gone through a process of professionalism as I'd like to say, I don't know. Yeah, um, and um, this happens uh, because there is a mechanism that allows the flexibility in order to uh, provide this type of content, right? But there are other tasks and other responsibilities on marketing and communications that might need to be structured somewhere in some other way, right? So we have spending proposals on one side, which we already know. Then we have the bounties that we already know. I go through the pros and cons on the bounty as well. And then we have this new idea of collectives. I've heard uh, around people discussing um, if there could be like the fellowship, maybe like the core technical fellowship, a marketing fellowship or a brand fellowship, you know, and we have the president of the Polkadot Alliance, right? That um, it's live, although there's no much activity over there, but the manifesto of the Alliance and the principles and guidelines of the Alliance give us kind of like a preview of what a collective could look like that uh, structures, guidelines, branding, documentation, maintains content, produces blog posts or articles, engages with uh, media outlets and so on on behalf of the community, right? Um, each of the mechanisms have uh, advantages. Uh, we were talking this afternoon, Jay, uh, on my private message, why you think spending proposals 
are good for content creation and some marketing activities because it provides the flexibility for the creator to do as it please. Uh, I think that other activities in marketing are um, bound to fail if they have uh, the short term roadmap that the spending, uh, the treasury spending mechanism would give them, right? So a bounty or a collective provides a longer roadmap uh, that allows a longer vision and a longer projection over time, right? And I think this is really needed for something like branding or marketing strategy. That's my opinion. But the um, argument of publishing this, given the last events we've seen on the marketing and communication side, was to try to kick off the the community discussion and try to organize and see, okay, so do you guys want this to be funded by the treasury? And if you want this to be funded by the treasury, how do you want it to be funded? Should we continue with spending proposals? Should we like think about a bounty or two bounties or three bounties or one collective or two collectives, you know, or a combination of all of the mechanisms? So that's the goal of this particular article. Very nice. Let's get some uh, thoughts from the panel. What do you guys think? Yalim. So the 16DG account that I think is doxed to everybody now is Mr. Gio, um in his chat um, has kind of changed his point of view recently. Like obviously he's the guy that's really pushing through a lot of these uh, content spends, right? Um, Currently, uh, I believe he wants to go to a bounty mechanism for what he's trying to do. Uh, there's like another chat with some people in it. And <laughs> I guess it's the people that he thinks are trustworthy. And you have to like ping who else you think. It's really weird. Um, so I think he's trying to come up with curators for a potential bounty. So, But I don't know if those curators would have any responsibility other than follow this guideline of the bounty if somebody meets that pay them out so they're just uh, trusted with the funds um whether or not this uh, bounty or geo or, or whoever will come up with a long-term vision which i agree is uh, required as raul said um is still remain remains to be seen um but yeah we, we definitely need some longer term thinking um i don't think it's sustainable just funding 50 different content creators to make very similar videos uh, every three months uh, we need like a longer term vision, I think. Go ahead, Adam. I would not trust Giotto at all to manage a bounty of any kind. Uh, he does zero due diligence on the things he votes on, and he's not equipped at judging media spends. That is my opinion based off of my experience and knowledge of Giotto. Now, can he rally a curator team? Probably. Uh, and I know I was part of that discussion, um, but I never received an invite. Um, you know, I just received long voice messages in my DMs from Giotto questioning why I'm saying the things I am and with zero understanding of who I am, nor my affiliations or experience. So um, I felt a little bit insulted because uh, <laughs> he's, he's making no effort to actually try to understand the ecosystem. So... Um, I mean, maybe he could pull together a good curator team, but he would not be able to judge if that curator team is good or not. Okay. Yeah, Limo. Yeah, I think the important thing is, uh, as Raul has posted this uh, discussion post, um, people who have opinions on like this more longer term vision, just post them in the discussion, right? It'll be like one place that's not spammed with a thousand messages every hour um to try and really capture the vision going forward um there's obviously a lot of people in the eco that are very competent in marketing and all the long-term planning that that involves um and i think it's up to you, all of us especially with this decentralization stuff going down um we need to take ownership and really come up with that vision ourselves collectively yes go ahead uh, jose yeah, um, totally agree with Raul in a way, right? Uh, you know, marketing is a big work, right? I mean, we say marketing and everyone thinks, okay, let's just talk about this parachain that works in Pocal. No, it doesn't work like that. Marketing in this case is just Pocalot with everything that it comes along with, right? So we, we, we try to go for the marketing of, let me just market HydraDX instead of Pocalot. 
right? Uh, it's very different than saying, hey, you know, you should use Polkadot and use Hydra for these kind of swaps, right? But it's like the message needs to be clear that it's the Polkadot network, right? All the time, forefront, right? Every parachain should be staying doing this because it's the strength of the whole, right? So. Nice. Um, yes, Adam. I also just want to make a comment on the language we're using here. Uh, we we throw around this term marketing, uh, but what I see is actually advertising. Um, marketing, I'm a guy who just loves precision of language. Marketing is the endeavor to identify your target audience, your target customers. That is what marketing is. Now you can do this through advertising. You can throw advertising out and see which users that affects and which ones engage. Uh, but the act of marketing is the proce process of identifying those individuals and then making sure that they go through whatever funnel, sales funnel, uh, media funnel that you know you have designed. And so what I'm seeing a lot of is advertising proposals, but I um, what I'm not seeing are a whole lot of true marketing strategies is like, what are we going to do once these users come into the ecosystem and how are we going to handle them? Well, we're going to get into it, but we do have a, a PR agency uh, up for a proposal right now and a very well-respected one in the ecosystem. Um, so we are attracting uh, people who can have longer term vision here. Jose? Yeah, uh, adding to what Adam was saying, right? Uh, totally, you know, business development, marketing, to me, the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So going to Indonesia and, you know, dealing with, you know, the government, just getting their, you know, either the IDEs or the university degrees on the blockchain and things like that. That is market penetration. That has a value in it, right? So it's like, where do we see marketing, right? How do how do we reward it, right? Some, some people is never going to be rewarded for it, right? Because it will be taken like business development, right? But, you know, the fact that Indonesia is coming to a table and doing all these things, well, that, you know, it brings so much more value to a table, right? So. Okay, let's hear from somebody who has uh, defined and is serving a big audience, Michael. Yeah, I thought I'd jump in because I am the Indonesia project right here. Um, I've just been sitting quietly because I do have a referendum up at 242 right now. So I am still one of these content creators. Um, and we did get a big nay from a very prominent DAO recently, which was a bit of a stab to the heart. But um, <laughs> we... <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, it's unfortunate at the moment what's going on because I feel like I'm just watching from afar because I don't feel like I'm in a position right now to give opinions on a lot of things because I do have a referendum up right now. Um, but seeing what's happening and from our experience, we did literally get invited by the government to come and teach them about blockchain because we were creating content. And, and as a result of that, I'm now on a team that is being, that's building a parachain or, or hopefully a parachain that will be supported by the government, that the government is building applications on that their citizens will use. So this is all Mandala chain. It's been tweeted about by the Web3 Foundation already. Um, and this all came because I had a social media channel and I was creating content about the ecosystem. Now, before they approached us, they were actively building in the Avalanche community. I'm a Polkadot ambassador. We run a chain agnostic platform. We talk about all ecosystems, but I'm a Polkadot ambassador. And we were able to flip them from building an Avalanche in Polkadot. And so it's like, it is unfortunate right now because I see all of the chatter going on now and I hate, I feel like dirty getting lumped into like some of this content creator talk, but there are teams that have actually like achieved great things. And, and obviously I'm biased because I feel like my platform has done that. Um, but I think, um, I think it was Lemo was saying before, like we need to be able to differentiate that not all content creators are created equal and everyone can see that with the Kusumerian as well. So I think like, um, I think Adam, you were talking about like language is important here. And so I feel like just, I mean, I'm tracking the votes that happen on ours and the comments that happen on ours and we're just getting painted with this big brush that we're grifters here to like raid the treasury. We're like literally a government asked us to come and teach them about blockchain. Well, speaking of grifters, uh, I did post this to my Twitter this morning. It's the meme with the guy uh, sitting at the table, and it says, councils are easier to grift than open gov. Changed my mind. And I do think that is, uh, that is my position. Um, not to say that um, councils and, and bounties and uh, collectives don't have a place, but I, I, think it, I think for me it's about building on a bunch of structures with narrow visions into something 
something bigger. You know, I, sometimes I hear some people in the ecosystem, they're like, okay, we're going to start a, a, a media collective. It's like, probably, probably not, right? Like, w we, need a, we need a bounty or a, a collective negotiating the polka dot blog, like being responsible for that. We need somebody like taking care of the Twitter accounts. And maybe all these will come together in a structure. Um, but let's not kid ourselves and think that we should take a bet on a, on a few people to run something as massive as, as marketing. That's my, my position there. So let's talk about this, um, this um, autonomous marketing initiative. This is the one that's uh, being led by Giotto, and this is number one on Raul's um, forum post there. This is the, uh, the spend proposal avenue, and we've actually never seen this before. We have um, a whale, we call them whales, uh, with 10 million dot on the line. So this is important perspective, right? Like if Polkadot goes to zero, how much will you lose? Is it 10,000? Is it 50,000? Is it 100,000? Um, this particular individual would lose 55 million, right? So we have to put skin in the game in perspective here, proof of stake. This is the continuum that he's working on. Uh, you see, we, we went over this previously, but at the bottom here, um, and you'll see this on the screen, I'm sorry for the panel, uh, on the stream, I'm sorry for the panel. But at the bottom here, we have the um, option of always voting yes for, for media proposals. On the top of the continuum, we have always voting no. Uh, Giotto's defined us as three from the bottom here. So this is voting yes for any proposal that is good enough, but also being generous, giving benefit of the doubt, believing content creators can improve. So this is where he is right now. Uh, he seems to be voting a lot of things through, a lot that the community doesn't agree with, doesn't think is good enough. Um, but he may be using this as bait for better uh, proposals to come through. He wants to move up to, over time, only voting yes for the best possible proposals. That's his end game there. Um, but he has stated that to move from the current one up to voting yes for any good proposal that's good enough um, and not just being overly generous, he wants 10x more proposals. Uh, which would be about 200 proposals a week. Um, and we'll go through the spending uh, history so far, but uh, let's hear from Limo so, uh, what he thinks. Yeah, I've spoke to you uh, privately about this. <clears throat> um, probably the end goal of having really uh, shit hot cure, uh, content creators is probably what most people are like, yeah, if we had like a few really high impact cure, uh, content creators, that'd be pretty good. The way of getting there is probably uh, Giotto's way is a bit different to how everybody else would do it. Um, yeah, and you're right, Jay. He said he wants like, I think he said like 100 proposals a day or something, um, which I think is kind of unrealistic. But, um, and I think he mentioned the goal is to like fund a, a lot of people initially. And then after three to six months, like, have some people review them who those people are i don't know but review how people have done what the impact they've had is and then fund the winners um but obviously it's causing a bit of tension in the community yeah no doubt okay yeah adam uh, let's hear from you guys and we're going to go over the uh the receipts so far so i'll say it again um I question Giotto's ability to judge like good or the best content. And I would need to see some big steps in creating a robust curation team to judge that. Um, Cause right now I'm not convinced that he can get to that um, top of the spectrum um, with, with his level of due diligence. We also have to understand that we're not only funding media with a media spend. We are funding the human enterprise that's behind that media creation. Now, Giotto it has been blatant about his values. And this is a person who literally doesn't care if you're a shit person, excuse my language. He doesn't care if you're the most abhorrent individual ever. He just wants you to pump his backs. Um, this is his candid uh, stance. And so if we see 100 proposals come on chain, he's going to vote A, 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 A. Uh, we don't know what human enterprises we're funding. And I personally, I think we should be considering that. Even if a person could make good content, do we want Polkadot affiliated with somebody who is an abhorrent individual? And what is that damage on Polkadot's reputation in exchange for the advertising or marketing that they're offering the ecosystem? Hmm. Okay, yeah, a moral argument there. I think Mike was next and then Batman and Limo. 
Um, I, I think one of the things to weigh in here is that um, I see the comment happening a lot in the Telegram as well, but like other ecosystems aren't doing this. Like Solana's not doing, like they're all doing it. Yes, the only are. difference is that, is that OpenGov is really public and everybody's seeing all of these proposals go through. Yeah. But like they are all doing it and like not little amounts of money, like tens of millions of dollars, but they're going out privately. So I, I think anyone you see a comment saying no one else is doing this, like Polkadot doesn't need this, like, if Polkadot doesn't do it, like prepare for the best tech to get dropping out of the top 30 on CoinGecko because they're all doing it. If you're wondering why Polkadot isn't mentioned by your favorite crypto influencer, it's because Polkadot hasn't paid them and other people have. I mean, like if, if you see a huge account with like loads and loads of followers, like this wasn't some organic, you know, um, <laughs> organic growth thing. Like this was intentional. Maybe there was a... a, a a group behind them, um, you know, part of a large network of, of shillers. And yeah, this is like, we need to play the game. And, and, and when people are making moral arguments, like how immoral is it to have this amazing tech of polka dot, but not be in the game, not tell anybody about it, just letting it just, you know, sit along the sides. Like, is it possible to act a hundred percent morally at all times? And do you, uh, go ahead, Batman. Yeah. So just adding on to what Adam said, Right. Uh, so from my interactions with Giorgio so far, his decisions are not tactical, right? Like he doesn't care about the exact details of how uh, sort of things are funded. Uh, he mostly just takes the positions, like a bird's eye view of how things, according to him, work in the world, right? Uh, and he's not really open to changing his opinions unless you can provide like really, really concrete data against it. And even sometimes, uh, despite that, he might just uh, like he, he will see what he believes, not uh, believe what he sees, right? So, so due diligence definitely is not does not uh, uh, appear on his uh, sort of checklist. Uh, so, just to add that to Adam's point, yeah. I think he's probably not planning to do due diligence by himself. He's probably waiting for other people to step up and do it for him, which makes sense. Limo. Yeah, um, set, set and creep the jealous in that a few of us are in. Ooh. Wait, hold no, on. I we're just, to, we're, we're free flowing I here. Exist, the only reason I did is because it's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what I would say is a lot of us uh, in the community and on this panel are pretty, like, low level in the community in terms of, like, we see the day to day goings on. We know who people are, we know what the character's like. Uh, we interact with them very often sort of thing. So we form our opinions on certain people, right? Um, when those discussions are had with Giotto, uh, he doesn't seem to care that much as uh, Adam kind of <laughs> laid out. Uh, he's very high level. Um, he doesn't care if this, if whoever it is, people have had bad experiences with, whatever, like it's not on his radar. Um, and then to echo the point about big content creators and uh, potentially getting paid, um, 100%. Uh, I won't get into why I know that, but yes, 100%. Yeah. Uh, there's been a few things where it's very clear to me now that that is the case, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's take a look at this. Uh, let's take a look at the spending history so far because it's always good to check out the numbers. Um, I put this list together and I'm saying, I mean, Giotto has been voting for a while now since actually his first vote was the Kusamarian proposal. Um, but organized uh, in this way, I'm starting it at October 31st because that's when he started this group chat with, I don't know, 350 members now or something like that. Probably the most active in the ecosystem at the moment. He's now named it the Autonomous Marketing Initiative. And just to put this in perspective, since that time, we've had a treasury income of nearly 650000 and out of all the proposals that he has voted aye on in line with marketing, you know, as defined by me, that have actually passed, um, that's 14.65% of income. Now, if you want to look at the percentage of the entire treasury, 0.21%. That's uh, all the things that have passed so far, and not any of the 22 proposals we're doing today. Um, now, we don't exactly know the dollar amounts on that because they haven't paid out yet. They'll be paying out in eight days, so uh, next Friday. But um, that's the state of it right now. Um, personally, 
uh, like I, I do this, this strategy of being generous to attract more talent does make sense to me. We did a very similar thing uh, in WAG Media and, you know, we attracted a lot of the, the talent that uh, is doing great stuff in the ecosystem today. But the question is, with uh, somebody with 10 million dot to lose, how much of the treasury uh, are people willing to tolerate them playing with before they get results. So let's dive into um, some of the proposals happening right now. We have, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna share that sheet. Here, I'll share it in the chat and if you guys wanna check it out, I'll keep this updated as best I can. And everybody can check that out. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the proposals uh, coming through right now. One of the ones that I'm really excited about is Market Across. I actually got a chance to talk to the CEO here I'm super stoked. This is a 21,400 DOT proposal, about 100,000 euros. And this is a PR agency that's worked with Akala, Centrifuge, Kilt, Manta, Parallel. Um, so here's an agency that uh, is looking for, I guess, a $100,000 introduction to token holders. And um, we'll have to, and I guess we'll see what they can do. So that's an interesting one. Another group that's coming out of this is a group called Addressable. And I've actually gotten a chance to speak with that uh, CEO as well. And we're going to give them a shot with the Kusamarian as well. They've developed a program where you can target media on Twitter to people with um, balances in a crypto wallet and who have interacted with contracts in the past. So we're going to attempt to put Kusamarian content, for example, discreetly on the timelines of everybody who's ever bridged to Moonbeam, for instance. These are kind of the powerful tools that uh, they want to bring to the table. That's um, addressable, they're called. Uh, then we have uh, LVs. So LV wants to be part of this funnel as well, right? I think LV is part of this vetting group that Giotto has, right? LV is actually anybody who... Any YouTuber who's going through the treasure here, Giotto is kicking to LV. LV is getting access to their analytics, and he's verifying whether or not their accounts uh, are grown with fake bots or with real subscribers or real users. So that's an interesting thing there. And, um, yeah, that's it for the um, kind of like big picture proposals so far. Uh, I'll just give a, a little break for the, uh, the panel to leave their thoughts here. Limo, don't hold back. No, um, I've seen some of the reports from LV. Um, he's doing quite a good job, I think. Um, he's obviously quite competent in like uh, SEO and like, uh, content analytics and stuff. Uh, I think he's watching. I think I've just seen him in the chat. So good job, Mr. LV. And fire promotional video. Uh, Michael from Saito, do you, do you have any thoughts of this? It's nice to have you on the show, but um, yeah, I know um, members of your team have been in the chat as well. What are you thinking? Yeah, guys, so thanks for having me. Um, look, uh, Jay knows a little bit that I also focus for, on the Saito side, a little bit on content and marketing. Also, you know, we do have a majority of our portfolio is Polkadot, uh, like almost 90%, I would say. Um, so we're really in the same game here and, um, I know how tough it is. <laughs> I like, I struggle when Jay gives me a recommendation to spend uh, 25 bucks on Twitter. I say, are you sure it's, it's worth it? This content is, is it the one, is it? So, uh, <laughs> so whatever, what's happening now, it's interesting. I, I feel like it's, I see a pattern of, you know, passion leading to, um, difficult, communications in the, in our space and i think it's important to like um something i learned in my previous uh work to always try to apply the principle of charity you know that people are not doing things just to spite each other or to you know uh, everybody's kind of uh yeah but then again you know we always do have to have a critical eye so it's 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 an interesting position to be in i don't know uh giotto that well personally i have I had previous communication with them. I think what's interesting is we have a completely different problem right now. Usually it's we can't find funding and now it's somebody saying let's spend all of it. Um, <laughs> right. so, 
it forces us to do the diligence kind of ourselves now. And I think that maybe that was somewhat intended. And um, so, yeah, but personally, I'm also here just like um, to to let people know that if there's anybody ever has like uh, questions for me, f how we do things on our side, I'm always available. And I think Jay made a nice post, uh, show your face, blah, blah, blah. So I'm a bit shy, camera shy, but uh, uh, happy to, you know, make an effort to, to be more uh, available for people um, as we see, uh, to understand how we see things at SciTail. Um, hopefully I don't say anything that gets me in trouble with my bosses uh, and misspeak, but um, yeah. The, I don't know. I can ramble ramble a lot about this, Jay. So I'll I'll cut it there. But um, bro, if you, that's if you get fired, just pick a content spend proposal. You'll actually be fine. <laughs> um, the uh, the link for this Telegram chat is uh, in the uh, chat now. If anybody wants to check it out, so we have a um, a bunch of like big content creators who wouldn't usually pay attention to the ecosystem. One is Altcoin Daily. They have what is it? One point three four million subscribers. And uh, this was brought to the table by, what were they called? That mystery agency, what were they called? The, the Poker Marketing Agency. The Poker is Marketing Agency. Talking about. Yes, yes, yes. So this is an interesting situation. Yeah, um, what, what, what's the panel's thoughts on this? Well, it's horseshit, right? Right. I think it's the TLDR. <laughs> yeah, Yeah. Um... Um, it was very obvious for a long time who it was. Um, the kind of the person who is we all know it's crypto streams now, kind of shot himself in the foot or just made it really easy to find out it was him. Um, yeah, I'd just say if you're gonna do something to promote the ecosystem yeah. like this, just be transparent about it, right? Um, so there's an issue with uh free proposals which altcoin daily is one of them okay. um they're very similar right um and i think the reason why people got annoyed about this subject is a it was a bit untransparent um and a bit weird uh that the crypto chains was kind of saying it was other people that was a bit strange uh, and secondly if you're going to take a 10 percent commission for bringing these people to the table. Fair enough, you, you get a commission for it, it's fine. But you should put in a bit more effort to make the proposals different, different topics. Um, you know, the this 10% is like, it's quite a sizable amount of money. Um, it's like more than people get doing a full-time job. Uh, you should put in like multiple days potentially of doing the proposal. Um, being part of a team that does proposals, it's multiple days worth of work from multiple people to make the proposal good, yeah. right? Um, you need to put in effort. I'm sure, Jay, when the Keith Marion does it, you have tons of people working on probably the whole team putting in on it, right? Um, you should put in effort. If you're going to get a decent amount of money for bringing the people here, which is fine, you should get paid for your work. We're, we're all, I think, agreeing with that. Be transparent about it and just put in more effort. I, and then you wouldn't have had the backlash that happened, I would imagine. So just to, to be clear, uh, Giotto has said that taking a commission for bringing valuable creators to the table, which is what he wants, he wants more, um, is totally fine uh, by him. And 10% um, he said is fine too. But I totally agree with Lima that you have to put in the effort here. So for this altcoin daily proposal, if this goes through, Polka, what is it called? Polka agency? Anyway, they will, um, they will get what is this, $11,000 or something like that, uh, cut of this proposal for bringing them to the table. Raul, it was really nice to have you. Do you want to leave any uh, closing thoughts? No, I will join. Uh, hopefully, I, I'll be able to join in the next sessions. So looking forward to yes. yeah, discuss more, and uh, I'll make sure to do my homework before. It's superb to have you back. Thank you so much for being here. Have a good one. Bye-bye. See you. Um, anyway, it... It's big business bringing in these proposals, uh, Giotto, and I, I actually hope more people hop on and do it. Because the thing is, even by Giotto's own admission, he, he sees this window of him like 
being able to hold the treasury open for this initiative as limited, right? He expects another whale's going to come in and counter him eventually or, or something like that. Or, or he might, you know, divide up his power among other people. Or, but, um, yeah, I, I think it's a time to be aggressive on getting the word of polka dot out and um, here's an opportunity to do it. Okay, who's up? Uh, who was first there? Just just scream out. And Ryan, I think we'll take off the timer now. We'll just like we'll just vibe it out. Um, to talk about this big topic here. Who who's first? Batman? It's Batman. Uh I think Adam was before me, but uh I'll go if you want. Go ahead, Batman. We'll you know, we'll let Adam like double it. Go ahead. <laughs> so uh I also think it's fair uh, for anybody to charge a commission if they bring value to the ecosystem, right? Uh, the problem with this proposal is, well, uh, I mean, uh, I, I don't think it's a secret uh, at all, right? Uh, I think you need to have some level of competence and some level of credibility to uh, for the community to bet uh, on you being able to deliver this, right? Uh, which is why it would be a nay for me on, on this one, right? Uh, honestly, like uh, 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 regardless of what has happened with Casey, right? Uh, I I do believe in second or maybe like f uh, fifth chances, even like in case of uh, him specifically. But uh, I mean, you have to start small. You can't just uh, like like you can't be this greedy after uh, sort of tarnishing your reputation this this badly. You know, like you have to start small. You have to earn that trust again. You have to build your reputation from the ground up, right? Uh, and I hope Casey will take that as uh, feedback going forward. Yeah, uh, very nice. Uh, Adam, go ahead. Yeah, I got to get going here soon um, too. But I mean, I've shared my thoughts. Uh, everyone knows that I have. Uh, I'm. I was very angry at Claudio because his actions um, were very deceitful and he went behind my back and he didn't, and he also even made me a fool on uh, dot take. And so I, I don't really appreciate that. Um, and I agree with Batman and Limo. You have to have some level of competency. If you're going to call yourself a talent acquisition manager, uh, it is a serious role and it has, um, there is a lot to do in that role. So uh, is Claudio, uh, is he competent in this role? I don't think so at all. Being Having having worked with him and knowing firsthand what his work, work ethic looks like. So he doesn't deserve the commission. He might deserve like a flat hourly rate because then he's just getting paid for the time he's spending. And so it wouldn't be a lot at all. Um, but then one thing we all have to consider here too, and this, I don't want to spread misinformation and uh, I don't want to make any accusations here, but it is it is plausible that Claudio controls the secret keys to these accounts, right? Because mm. all you have to do to get verified is send a because the altcoin daily uh, example, all they had to do is just send a DM on Twitter. And if Claudio is working with them privately, he's just like, OK, just send this code to uh, to them and then you're going to be good. And so Claudio could be not only the talent acquisition manager, but the financial broker for these people. Yeah. And then the question is, well, is he getting paid $11,000 or is he getting paid $100,000 and he's just going to pocket the money? Uh, and based off of his actions, you know, for example, like 218, do we like, I thought that he would you know, return those funds, no problem. But after seeing his actions, I, I'm, I'm highly doubtful that he'll return those funds now. So Claudio is someone who has now lost all trust and uh, could very well be controlling the secret keys, though he could also not be controlling the secret keys. We don't know that for a fact. So I just wanted to, to make that point. It's just a possibility, and it, it did cross my mind last night as well. It would be good, even with uh, agencies bringing uh, talent to the table, to have the talent uh, speak for themselves as well, although it's not always going to be ideal. We want to hear from more people on the panel, uh, but... Um, Babe, a uh, new Alice and Bob video just dropped. Amazing thumbnail. Is this whale killing polka dot? Probably the answer will be no, as uh, it usually goes on these titles. But um, maybe we'll watch that at the end, the end of the show here. Um, now, I don't want to like make this whole show about uh, Claudio here, but I do want to hear what everybody has to say. So, Funky, let's go. 
So um, I actually worked as a talent acquisition manager, both on the candidate and client side no before way. I came to Web3. I was a recruiter for almost two years. So I am very skilled at just people and relationship building, right? I think anybody who knows me would, would attest to that fact. So I'm just gonna publicly state this right now. If you need help with your proposal, I will do it for a 1% fee. And guess what? That 1% fee will immediately go to Teddy Dow because I don't want the money we can do something with charity and put it from the treasury straight to the charity. The person who is maybe doing the proposal can pick the charity and just do anything else like they would on Teddy Dow. And that 1% would go straight to charity. I will do this basically for free for anybody. You know, I was trying to tell Alejandro, I would help him. I'll help anybody. This is what I do. I was a teacher for 20 years. I just have a servant's heart. This is just me. So yeah. Anybody who's listening, you see this, you need help with a proposal, 1%, and it's going to go straight to Teddy Dow. You can even send it to the Teddy Dow multisig if you want to ensure that it all goes through proper channels. And I'm not touching it directly. Thanks, Thanks. Jay. Thank you, Ryan. I, I, I would not recommend to any of my friends to work for free, but I think it is a noble, noble, noble offer. And this is the whole point of this strategy is the bar is so, so low. So who's going to step up and step over that bar? and get us to where we need to be. Go ahead, Limo. Just a very quick comment, because I think we said some stuff, and I think maybe some of the audience don't have the full context. Sure. So there's referendum 255, 256, and 258. These three referendums uh, are involved with the, the marketing agency, whatever, right? So the issue that Adam brought up, and Adam's just left, is that the beneficiary account of all three of these referenda is the same account. No way. Now, we cannot be sure who that account is. Is it potentially Geo's account and he distributes the funds? Who, is it is it Cryptosh Chain's account? That's not been made transparent, oh. which is a, a big red flag for me, right? So this is information that people need to know it needs to be made public who is the ultimate owner of those accounts. And because if it's like an escrow account, for example, which, you know, isn't the newest thing in the world, we need to know who owns the escrow and that they're trustworthy to actually pay out the funds as they say they're going to pay them out. That would be the thing that Adam spoke about, but he didn't provide the full story. Oh, I had no idea about this. Okay, so in the beneficiary section of the proposal, here I'm looking at the Altcoin Daily, uh, 255. So the beneficiaries are Altcoin Daily and Polka Marketing. Um, on the Mason Ver, 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 Ver Lewis one, um, we have Mason and Polka Marketing. So are they each getting a cut? Is it being split up or is it all going to one or the other? How, how do you know? I would assume whoever it is, the, in, if the intentions are good, is they will just pay out whatever they said the individual creators get and then they get the 10%. But still, we don't know who owns that account. It's not been made clear as far as I understand it. So if it's the marketing agency slash Claudia, that should be made clear. If it's Giotto, that should be made clear. But, but it, The lack of transparency is what makes people food and nervous and all this kind of stuff but it there's two beneficiary addresses so is it possible to split the final location of a treasury yeah, payout you can you can see it on the call i'm looking so at it right YouTube now yeah. mm -hmm. it's a treasury spend for to altcoin daily for 19.29 thousand dot okay and then there's a treasury spend to poker marketing for 1929 dot okay so you can see. I apologize for spreading the wrong information. I but, apologize, Claudio. Okay, so it is split up there. Um, okay, and then we, but we can assume Claudio owns the Poca Agency one, right? Okay, okay. Confirmed. Okay, well, that's what this show is all about, all right? We're attempting governance, we're learning as we go. So uh, we have a bunch of um, proposals here in English. Okay, all in crypto. This is an interesting one. We're going to be uh, having them on the show, I think, next week, is it, or something like that? They have a 51,000 uh, follower uh, YouTube account. Uh, True Primer 
um, they came with like a big spend proposal. And this was a situation where a bunch of people in the chat was calling them out saying it was too expensive. And they actually came back with a much, 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 much more reasonable proposal uh, that they just put out here on 263. So uh, this is the community kind of, you know, vetting and negotiating with content creators. Um, and I assume this is the one that uh, 16D and others will vote on. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. I don't want to make this show about Claudio, but real quick, um, what happened, uh, with this swing vote here? So, I mean, here, here's an example where 16 D or G Giotto's on the I side here. Everybody has been freaking out about it. So much goddamn wasted time about this. But in the end, the 30 million was overpowered. Um, can anybody give an update to our audience about what happened here? Go ahead, Limo. Yeah, basically, um, uh, a lot of information came out about the marketing agency. People thought that was a bit shady. Um, I, I I think it was kind of disrespectful what happened to Adam. Um, Adam didn't know about any of this. He got put on the spot on uh, the dot take show um, when obviously it was Claudio the whole time. Um, People saw that and started voting against it. Uh, one thing I would like to quickly, uh, I don't know if debunk is the word, but just because I'm seeing this being put around a lot. Um, there was one account that made it that people are saying is Gav. Okay. Mm. So why are they saying that it's Gav? On referendum number eight on Polkadot, Gavin voted I two accounts delegated to Gavin after he initially voted, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that it's Gav, the same as if I delegate to Chaos Dow, it doesn't mean that Chaos Dow is Lima, right? Hmm. If I was a whale that wanted some soft power in the ecosystem, probably one of the easiest ways to do it is wait for Gav to vote and then delegate to him so that people think going forward that I am Gav. Not saying it is, not saying it isn't, but we're not you can't be 100 percent convinced that it is same as you can't be 100 percent convinced that it isn't unless the person only earning the account sets an on-chain id so be careful spreading misinformation like i just did about the previous referendums and again sorry about that <laughs> it's all good it's all good uh we're all here to check each other okay so um yeah, so that proposal goes down, but then we had a tip, a big tip opened up by Stake Plus, who, are you still on the show? Hey, Tom, what's going on, man? You put this big tip up for Adam Stieber's participation in Dot Take, which I've also enjoyed, um, $400 per episode. Uh, can you say, tell us anything about this? Yeah, I just saw everything that happened, and it just felt kind of bad, and I knew that they had gone ahead and produced some number of episodes, and it you know, felt bad that Adam didn't get something for his participation in that. So I thought I'd put something up there. Yeah. Um, okay, so that should... Oh, sorry, I just lost my spot here. Yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. A million on either side now. Um, we'll have to see if 16D supports this, but I did put it in the spreadsheet as part of upcoming um, spends. Um, okay. Rainbow, thank you for the super chat. And not as big a grifter as Jay. Yeah, you can't actually you can't actually top my grift. My grift has been going on hard since June of 2020, and I'm not stopping anytime soon. Uh, go ahead, Limo. The paradox is right on Kusama about you back in the day, Jay. Big grifter. <laughs> you know, I put I put my beef with the validator mafia to rest. And so I don't appreciate you bringing that up on this show. We need to bring the Valdez Mafia back. Like, they're like the weakest cartel right now. I know. Like, they need to stop the game. What happened to the Valdez Mafia? <laughs> um, okay, so moving on to other uh, regional proposals here. So, okay, we're getting some growth on the English side as far as proposals coming through. But uh, we don't have... Um, a lot in other places. So we have some Latin American ones. Here's one by Mac Zam, who, let me see, um, proposal for advancing. Oh yeah, this is a, a general uh, proposal for uh, an education program for DeFi and content. 
We also have uh, Bra16D, who I think prepared a video, but I didn't have time to get it uh, up here for the show. Um, and, oh yeah, this is sticking in uh, Latin America here. This is on the Portuguese side. Sorry, I don't mean to mix you all into the same pot here. But we had um, the uh, VDS group translate this uh, Space Monkeys episode we did with Gav. Um, and they're looking for a thousand dot for it. I thought, um, which is like five thousand five hundred dollars, about one point nine thousand or one point eight thousand, something like that, was for the translation itself. And I, I spoke to the guys and I said, you know, which is as Ben brought up in the last show, um, like something like eighty percent of the cost of producing the episode originally. I brought up with the guys that if they're gonna like piggyback off of Kusamarian content for a spend proposal, that they tr they they do it as efficiently as possible. Um, you know, so as to not inflate the overall cost of Kusamarian content, which I don't think is a, is a, is a good look or a good practice. Um, and they did take that to heart, and now they're going to dedicate more of the thousand dot here to promotion of the work they did, which is actually like super beautiful subtitling work. Um, but yeah, I would just say that as far as like subtitling, translations, and everything go, we've come a long way with AI, and, you know, I'm just waiting for somebody to start that translation business that if you can do high volume, high quality translations, you have a great business on your hands. Uh, go ahead, Limo. Yeah, one thing about content creation in other languages where I've kind of refined my thoughts on it, because if you remember like back in the early days of AAG, uh, especially when uh, DocCast were going for funding, we were obviously you know very pro uh, media spends in, in Spanish, for example. Um, I think we need to, for example, now you see a lot of Spanish proposals going through, right? And we need to uh, apply the same level of scrutiny to localized language uh, content as we do to English, right? Um, we shouldn't just be like, oh, oh, this is like a Chinese proposal, great, let's I it because China is important. If the content creator is not good and like, boring and monotone and all this kind of stuff we need to apply that scrutiny to them as well right um i know funky we, we spoke about this a lot that you know uh, content in other languages is important but with the influx now we need to i i think well i what i think is not what's going to happen because it's Jota, but we need to apply some level of scrutiny and make sure that the content creators in other languages are actually good um and not just be like oh great they speak this language right yeah, that's part of the vetting and curator um, machinery that needs to be built up here. Yeah, hey, Dan, welcome to the show. Hey, yeah, thank you for having me here. Uh, I didn't want to talk as much about like these single proposals because I personally have no idea about content creation and marketing as much and like the professionality of it. I personally, I'm really interested about the idea of the collectives and possibly how to structure it and organize it overall, how we should as a community approach uh, marketing content creation, advertisement and stuff. And I think there it is very interesting to say uh, when it comes to the translation and the communities that there is also a very interesting way to possibly in the future use these collectives so that they don't have to necessarily be used for a specific use case, uh, like the fellowship and technical stuff or marketing, or uh, I would say like for me, I think very interesting would be delegation and possibly like legislative stuff, but also these translations and uh, communities who speak a different language because then you can bring people together who actually can bring expertise and help us translate the content, the either the official Polkadot one or spread the word, but give, uh, have kind of a way to uh, get together and uh, give a certain evaluation into the content because yes, we can judge how someone looks on the screen like if it's boring or not, but if we don't understand the language, like how can you actually know <laughs> if it's interesting or not if you are looking at it? And uh, so yeah, that is kind of what I wanted to say on that topic. 
It's beautiful, yeah. Again, I think it's a huge opportunity for anybody who wants to pick that up, um, helping us get the story of Polka Dot out in multiple ways, but also reliably um, in a way that we can we can trust. So there needs to be a group of people that token English speaking token holders can trust, um, and the other way around as well. Like, when will somebody translate AAG? Um, let's see. Uh, just kind of winding down here. Um, just throwing out some proposals for people to keep an eye on here. We have uh, one Russian one from Cryptor. Um, we have, um, oh, so this is interesting. So we have Being Satoshi, um, huge audience here. Let's see, Being Satoshi, um, oh yeah, I, I mean a fairly large audience. So they have 287,000 on YouTube, 296,000 on Twitter. Um, this is a big India uh, group. But um, we also have this India group who we were speaking about last week um, with Nick, if you guys remember, the IBC, Largest Polkadot Developer Outreach Proposal. And they were asking for an insane, insane amount of DOT, 82,140 DOT. I have received a word, and perhaps Batman can speak to this. This is a known scam group, and they have uh, done multiple scams in the past, token scams, airdrop scams. Uh, I think more information is coming out about this group soon, but this apparently... Don't want to spread rumors, but is complete bullshit. Batman, are those um, sarcastic emoji? Um, no, so uh, I actually did not know that that was a blatant scam, right? Uh, but just judging by the proposal itself, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it, it was. Yeah. Uh, because so so what they wrote in the proposal was like it was some unrealistic number uh, like we want to onboard like a million developers or One something. One million polka dot developers in India. Let's go. Yeah, we need a million developers in crypto first for that. Right? <laughs> I mean, uh, that, that, that makes zero fucking sense. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know, like, uh, I, I'm not sure why someone would uh, vote I on this one. Uh, uh, even if it was legit, I would still uh, lean towards the nay side simply because uh, like events like these do happen in some of the universities in India, but none of them convert very well. Like like uh, once I took a look at their uh, YouTube videos, uh, what they had linked. I mean, uh, if I was in one of those colleges, I, I would make sure that I would never, uh, I would make it a priority to tell everyone I know uh, to not uh, uh, sort of think about ever learning anything about Polkadot. I just, so, just, did, uh, just did some quick math here, and if they achieve their goals here, it's one in every 1,400 people would be a Polkadot developer in India. Boom! You, know, you, like, get on the bus, and there's, like, you know, you're chatting with other developers, like, anywhere in the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. let's see. I mean, we're, uh, sorry. Okay, like, I'm spreading rumors, but, like, I don't know. I got this on good word, and just to let people know, uh, maybe to hold off voting on this till we have more information. Obviously, if that turns out to be false, there's still uh, 19, almost 20 days left in the decision period to pile on and get these guys through and get that million developers on board. Um, yeah, thanks for the uh, <laughs> thanks for the perspective there, Batman. But watch out for IBC. Um, Dr. Cow is looking for some retroactive payments for videos he's made in the past, videos that have not that weren't awarded by WEG Media. There's like some very specific things here. Um, I think some members of the WEG Media direction team spoke to him about a previous proposal, so he came out with this one instead. Go ahead, Ben, if you have some chat or some context. Uh, he, he pulled this one. This is the new one? Or unless he pulled this one too? So he done, he done one and it was wrong, and then he did it again, and then within a few days he then canceled it okay if you opened it up okay yeah you're checked. right so he took the pre-image out of this one too so he's not doing either right now is the idea right okay yeah. thank you very much for that so we'll have to see what happens with uh, dr cow on the chinese side i already spoke um with you michael do you have anything else you want to add about uh this puppy he had a good piece earlier uh no we've spoken a lot not unless anyone else wants any more info or any questions like, i think i guess that's the one last thing we we are not just wanting to like ram this through and um, we're very like grateful that we're in the confirming side of the moment but we also like want to be a contributor in the ecosystem so i would actually like the support of the general populace yeah. um, and that's why i would like to, people to know about um what we're actually doing and that we are a legit operation and that we think that we're doing great things in this part of the world because 
we want to be a long-term contributor to the ecosystem. So it's not just about getting it through. I actually would love the community to know who we are and that we are wanting to be a long-term participant and player in the ecosystem. This is one I don't get the naysides. I mean, massive following on, on social media, great viewership, building literal infrastructure <laughs> that the nation with one of the highest crypto adoption in the world is 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 their government's on board to use it. So this looks like a big win for me. And so I do hope people can get that through. Yeah, go ahead, Babin. Yeah, I think it might just have uh, gotten squeezed in with the wrong proposals at the wrong time. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I'm glad that you came on. This is the best that I've made myself. Or I've worked with people and Some of the voters get some perspective. We're, we're an open book as well. So if anyone wants to DM me or ask any questions or we opened up all of our analytics to LV as well. So if anyone from any other groups want to have a chat as well, we're, we're, yeah, we've got a, we got a big team. And so we're, we want to collaborate too. Like we're happy to, you know, collaborate with anyone. If you want to um, share workloads or cross promote, or, you know, we, we can do some heavy lifting of teams as well. Like we've got a big backend workforce, you know, with 13 staff. So um, we want to be a player in the ecosystem. And so that's why, that's why it's more important to me just so that it gets rammed through as a, as a yes. I want like actual community support, like real support. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because this, uh, who knows how long this structure will last, right? So obviously you want to be thinking long term. Uh, just to confirm, this is ref 242, is it, Michael? Yeah, yeah, 242. Yeah. Republic Rupiah, Indonesia. Nice. That's set. It's confusing because I'm not Indonesian, but yeah. <laughs> Um, this is set to pass in seven days, 17 hours. And, um, yeah, that's the show. Now I pulled up Alice and Bob's video here, which I think is all about the subject. It is 34 minutes long though. So I don't know if we want to all sit through that together, but I'm going to put that in the, uh, I'm going to put that in the chat here for everybody. I'm going to put it, um, in the uh, chat on the side there, which looked very lively today, guys. Thanks for everybody's contribution. I think it was 50% crypto's chain actually, but um, interesting nonetheless. Um, nice to have you all here. Check out that video and uh, let's reconvene on the Telegram group. Uh, like I said, this is, <laughs> you are welcome. Um, Batman, let's promote your podcast. Go ahead. So uh, I think some of you might know, I recently started recording some stuff and the first episode with Limo is now live. Uh, what I'm, it's basically just me talking to a bunch of friends and just people in the ecosystem trying to get to learn their uh, stories. Uh, it's mostly a human centric podcast just to get to know how people got started in crypto, what's keeping them here, things like that. Uh, I'm calling it the chain of thought podcast. And the first episode with Limo is live on the channel. If you don't mind, uh, can I share a link on the chat? I, I just did actually. So check that out. It looks oh, awesome. Looks really good. Batman, could you speak at all to expectations versus reality of uh, starting a brand new uh, podcast show? Because uh, it's an idea a lot of people have. Yeah. It's it's fucking hard. <laughs> I, I I mean uh, I did not imagine that it would take this much time, right? Like I just thought that I would just sit in front of a camera, I would get a nice microphone, maybe just I even asked Jay for some tip, tips, right? Like so, I just sort of set up my camera uh, with, with with my iPhone and uh, I got a ring light, ring light, like you said, Jay. Uh, I even bought a new microphone and I was like, now I'm good to go, right? Like I have the setup ready. Uh, like ready for the first episode. I recorded one with Funky. I recorded one, one with Limo. And it was all fun and games up until then. But <laughs> then I had to edit those episodes, which was uh, like, I mean, just just watching those episodes. Like I think the one with Limo is like three and a half hours long. And I've only gotten through the uh, first hour so far yet. Uh, uh, and uh, the one with Funky is about an hour long. So I'm hoping to someday find enough time to be able to edit edit these things. And I, I definitely did not take into account the fact that I would have to sort of uh, set up the thumbnail and, and just the little things that, that I completely forgot about, right? Like that I would need graphics for this and I would need uh, to sort of decide on the font. I would need to uh, sort of build an intro. I would need to select the music. Selecting the music was like took, took a whole day, by the way. <laughs> 
Damn. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Limo, go ahead. It looks beautiful, by the way. It looks very, very good. Worth the effort. Go ahead, Lim. Yeah, I want to apologize to Batman. Uh, the interview was on a Saturday, which is uh, the day after the Chaos Star Friday night call. And I think I consumed about two liters of beer during the interview with Batman. <laughs> um, yeah, and it went on for a long time. Uh, but we got through a lot of topics. It was very fun and very interesting to talk to Mr. Batman. Um, and a quick one, because you mentioned it, Jay, about the chat, uh, which I'm assuming you meant the dot autonomous marketing group, whatever. I've said this in the chat. That chat is to talk to Giotto, to promote your thing and get people to review it and blah, 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 right? If you just derail it constantly, especially if you're somebody that's like wanting to get treasury money and wants you to eyeball you, you're going about it the wrong way if you're spamming the chat, right? <laughs> like you probably should remain on topic. Like I personally don't care that much, even though I'm like admin in the group for some reason. Like, well, it's probably in your best interest to keep it on topic and talk about like your referend there and getting feedback and stuff. Just take that word of advice, please. Yeah, that's a very, very good advice. It is a good chat to pay attention to, and there's all these like side chats that you'll catch along the way, um, where uh, you know with their own quests and everything like that. But I think it's great. Look, I, I think it's an important time to to go hard on giving getting the story of Polkadot out there before the next attention cycle. Um, I don't want to be left behind personally. And um, look, we have a big whale that says uh, you'll get paid if you put in just slightly more effort than the last guy who got paid. So let's see how quickly we can get that up that ladder of quality and um, get this going. I'm in every crowd talent control room, everything according to some. <laughs> yes. How many, how many accounts do you have, Limo? Or is it all under Not, Dark Limo? It's just one account, yeah. but apparently I uh, control everybody's vote and tons of companies and everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's all out there in the open. Um, gotta love the transparency. Um, but uh, like of pure like of pure like of. Let's go. Um, we love you guys. Thank you very much for coming on the show here. Uh, let's see. We have a Friday dump tomorrow. Oh yeah, Guy from Coin Bureau is hosting an X space that's going to feature. Uh, we have Sean and Phil on the Polkadot side, and Alice and Bob is going to be there too. Um, but then we also have reps from Cardano and from, um, what's it called? Cosmos. So that's going to be at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Um, what is it, like 1 p.m. UTC tomorrow? Um, go over to the Coin Bureau page and make sure you set a reminder to be on that space because it would be great if we could get a lot of liveliness in the chat, in the comments. Let's call out uh, the people when they want to spread FUD about Polkadot, and um, let's have a good showing there. Um, and then on Sunday, stick around because we're going to have uh, Basti, uh, an episode of Space Monkeys with Basti, ahead of next week's next open dev call. That's going to be happening on Tuesday. So lots happening here on the Kusamarian. Make sure you follow along. Thank you very much to the panel and everybody for participating. And we'll see you all next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you.